the prophet Hosea spoke these words. My people are destroyed for the lack of the knowledge of God. And still today, these words ring true. Introducing W.C. Hunter, pastor of the world's church of the living God in Chattanooga, Tennessee. For the next half hour, we invite you to experience the words of Knowledge Broadcast. He's my captain, uh, and the Lord God, he's my God. I won't give up, I can't give up, because he's a deep, so deep inside. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I can't give up. Cause I'm going on in my Jesus. Oh, yes, I am. I won't give up. When I walk in the shadow of death, I won't give up. I won't give up. I will feel no evil for the Lord God. He From side to side Let's go to the book of Psalms 126. What do you do? All through life you find yourself making decisions. Some decisions you make might, might not be for your immediate self-gratification or, or pleasure. Might not feel good. If you read uh, Hebrews, I believe the 11th chapter, about Moses, when he was come to years, he chose. He had to make a decision. He, cho he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, though he was raised in the palaces of Egypt, educated, taken care of. Hebrew. Powerful man of Egypt, a Jew. The Song of Degrees. David, I believe, wrote this. Psalm 126. 126. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Oh, hallelujah. We were like them that dream. It was like a dream. They've been captive in, in Babylon for about how many? About 70 years or so. Just, just captive. At times captured by other enemies. Depressed. Used. Call it times and they would sow crops. And the Amalekites and others would come down and, and, and just tear up their, their crops and, and their fields and let their camels and horses trot down the, the, the good Crops that were coming up. And they began to fear them. They start fearing their enemies. And you know why God got, he, they were in captivity then because God got, he was upset with them. They sinned against God. They messed up. Sometimes we put ourselves in bad situations. That's not a trial. We put ourselves in bad situations. God puts a whipping on our rump at times. And we're paying for it. But, God didn't get upset because, uh, okay, he, he, he was punishing them. 
They were hiding in the mountains, suffering. God got upset with those people because they forgot who he was. He sent a prophet and said, I brought you out of Egypt. You forgot that. And I told you, don't fear your enemies. When you fear, God was angry. And he dealt with them. So here when these people were captive in Babylon, said God turned their captivity. I wonder, you don't have to say nothing, have you ever been caught in something that you didn't think you'd ever get out of? Have you ever been caught up in, whether it's a, a state of mind or, or a, a state of life, a physical state, have you ever been caught in something that you felt that you'd never be delivered from? Felt captive. Go ahead, brother. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Go and ahead. And our tongue with singing. Oh, yeah. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. That's what we want the heathen to say about us. God brought them out. Like God brought Lazarus, like Jesus, right? called Lazarus out of that tomb. God brought them out of that state, brought Lazarus out of his dead state. When Jesus, do you know when he spoke the word to Lazarus, the first thing he did was call Lazarus' name. Lazarus. That woke him, that did it. And Lazarus knew whose voice that was. You gotta know the voice of God. He knew that that voice was talking to him. You know when God's talking to you. Yes. We all do. We know when God's talking to us. We all look for a word from the Lord. We want it to happen like it does in the Bible. Where it said, then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Set him up on his feet. Made him jump. Now, see, we want that kind of action. Don't you find that God came to Elijah in a... One of the prophets with a still small voice. You know when God's talking to you. Go ahead. We're going to let this go here in a minute. Third verse. The Lord has done great things for us. Mm -hmm. Wherefore we are glad. Now do you have that testimony? That God has done great things for you? Amen. He will continue. Yes, sir. He will. Go ahead. Turn again our captivity, O Lord. As the streams in the sea. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. This, this ripped my heart out just about. Because it was so sweet. Turn again. Listen, our captivity as the streams in the south. The south, it was talking about, yeah, it was talking about direction. Mm -hmm. But it was talking about a certain place too. Yes, sir. Caught between two dry places. It, it's talking about dry Land and, and sometimes it's, and they were comparing their lives, their captivity to the streams in the south, dry, arid, no, no pro productivity, nothing happened, Amen. nothing growing, nothing with all the effort, nothing, nothing taking place. So, when you are going through that dry spell, yes. when you are going through that time of trial, pain, hurt, disappointment, it's going to come. What do you do? This right here. They that sow in tears. I used to wonder what that meant. Bring it in the sheaves. You ever heard that song? I'm not a vocalist. I guess that's obvious. Bring it in the sheaves. We should come rejoicing. Bring it in the sheaves. I used to wonder, well, you know, what are you talking about? You just forget about it, you know? They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Shall reap in joy. And this is exactly what will happen. Even as you go through times of trial, times of sorrow, times of tears, times of heartbreak, you never stop sowing in the kingdom of God. You never stop sowing good, the good of God in your life. You never stop sowing the good of God in the lives of your children, your family. You never stop being productive. 
even in times of trial, you sow. Continue to be responsible. Don't give up. Don't, don't quit. Because eventually, everything that you've sown is going to come up. It's going to come up. So even though you're sowing, it's going to come up. And you, you reap in joy. Go ahead. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again yes, with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Praise God. The trials of your faith, saints, this is not, that's not even about you, it's about our faith. The trials of our faith are much more, the Bible says that, precious than that of gold. Things happen. I'm not talking about things we cause. Things happen to try us as to whether we believe God or no. And when you know God has said something, you stand on it. You don't, you don't budge from that for nobody, for no reason. You don't move from that, no matter how justified. You're going to have to choose the way of God. Choose to go God's way. Let's go into the book of Numbers, I believe it is. This is what they wanted them to do. Let's start with the sixth verse. They say, go tell him this. We're about to close out. Let's, let's go. Numbers 22, 6. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, this people. Have mercy. For they are too mighty for me. Have you ever, y'all excuse me for interrupting so much. Has there ever been somebody that you dislike so much that you wanted to see them cursed? That you wanted to see evil befall them? Somebody you felt did you wrong some way or another and you wanted it to fall on their head so hard. That's wrong. You're stepping into territory that does not belong to you. Vengeance belongs to God. He tells you, if God tells you to he can give your enemies a cup of water. He's not saying to invite your enemy in your home and let them hang around you while you go to sleep. He ain't telling you, no, he's not sitting out there. They want some water, I'll give them something, I'll watch them. You know what I mean? You want a hamburger? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I get, yeah, okay. That don't mean you'd be silly. Yeah, use, use, use wisdom. But these people hated Israel so much, they wanted them, they wanted them cursed. When you want somebody cursed, you want their whole lives to be damned. You want them to live in a constant state of condemnation and misery. And there are folks on this planet, and God knows, I hope not in this church, that feel and live like that. That's horrible. That's a horrible thing. So go ahead. I'm, we're going to try to get through this. Go ahead. For they are too mighty for me. Mm -hmm. Pre-adventure I shall prevail that we may smite them and that I may drive them out of the land. Okay. For I know that he whom thou blessest is blessed. Isn't that something? The word of Balaam they knew would go a long way. They knew that if he spoke certain things, that's why men of God do. They had to be very careful about what they, that's, that's true. You have to be careful about what you speak, especially if God's spirit has moved on you a certain way. You have to be careful. You, as a matter of fact, you have to be careful about your own life. You have to be careful what you speak about yourself. The word of man of God gets is powerful in his anointing and, and representing God. So he has to be careful. But you have to be careful about identifying yourself and then describing yourself. I, I, and just sick. Okay. I can't get ahead. I'm miserable. Get rid of all that negative talk. Yes, sir. Start speaking some good stuff. Yes, sir. So I'm moving forward in life. My life is changing. Yes, sir. God
God is with me. I got a few, well, we'll talk about that, or just a few scriptures and that are positive. So you done bad about you? Yeah, it's a lot of bad stuff about Pastor Al. You know, you know, I'll say that to you just, just for an example to let you know. I'm not perfect. But I, t I say good stuff. But Overseer told me once, don't even think about it. Concent concentrate on the negative of your life. Think, think about the strengths. You know what I do? That's the way to live. And that's the way you got to talk to yourself. You got you to speak the language of the kingdom of God. You got to speak in accordance with God's word over your own life, let alone your families and others. But they, they knew that Balaam, whatever Balaam called for, was cursing a blessing, that it would happen. Okay, so let's, let's read on down to seven, go down to seven. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their land. Have mercy. And they came unto Balaam and spake, un, spake unto him the words of Balaam. You know what that means, don't you? The rewards of divination. They're going to pay this man for his favor. They're going to back, and some people try to do it. They're going to pay this man for his words of prophecy against Egypt, I'm, uh, Israel. The rewards of divination. And he said unto them, Okay. Lodge here this night, mm -hmm. and I will bring you word again. Okay. As the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. So they just stay here tonight. See, they had money. People, people, like, ooh, people go to the limit for money and stuff. They, folks, will. He said, "Just stay here tonight." Say, "Let me go ask God about." He knew better. He, he didn't even have to ask the Lord about that. He knew better than to go curse Israel, God's people. He's going to curse. He didn't, he didn't even have to ask, but he was trying to find, like, like we do sometimes, how many of us have heard certain things in this book that God wasn't pleased with, I mean, he didn't want us to do, and we try to find a loophole. Come, come on, God. I, 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 one, two, got five or six of them, I know. Well, seven. <laughs> try to find a way around it. Uh-uh. What God speaks, he means. It's all cut and dry. So he said, just stay here. Let me, let me get word from the Lord and, and I'll get back with you. Okay. All right. And God came unto Balaam and said, what men are these with thee? Uh-oh, God already knew. He didn't even give him a chance to come and pray about it. You ever heard people say that? No. I prayed about it. Like that settles it. You know. <laughs> people tell you that in a minute. That's supposed to shut you up. You're not supposed to think nothing else about them. You're not supposed to get in their way. Don't they already show they, they're opposed to anything you got to tell them. They're not going to hear it. They're unreasonable. Well, I prayed about it. You know, okay, all right, we'll go, we'll go ahead and do what the Lord told us. See, God ain't told them nothing. Don't even, don't even listen to God. But God, you know, he said, who are these men? They came to you this night with, with this money. What, what do they want? God, he knew. He knew, but what happened, brother? Let's, let's try to get through it. And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of the poor, and Moab has sent, me unto, has sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covered the mm -hmm. face of the earth. Talking about the Jews. He said, just go curse them. So get hit them. Come Verse 12. Come now, curse me them. Preadventure I shall uh, I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. Go to twelve. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Now, does does that leave any room <laughs> for confusion of any sort? Does that I mean is there anything to figure out? I, I don't see that. It, anything to look around for and try to figure it out or make something else out of it? Sir. No. God told him, you shall not, and many times God has told us about certain things. Don't do it. Don't go, don't say it. Or either do this, do that, forgive, love, give, serve, whatever. God will tell us what to do. But he told him, plain as day, don't go. Thou, so, thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Okay. And Balaam rose up in the morning and, and said unto the princes of Balak, get you into your land. Said, go, just get out of here. Now he knew. He knew the will of God. He talked. 
Yeah, he already knew. Then he, God came to him and told him. So that, that, that put a, a double seal on the matter. God said, don't do it. So he said, y'all might as well get out of here. God told me, don't go with you. Don't have anything to do with this. For the Lord refuses to give me leave uh -huh. to go with you. So he knew. Go ahead. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak, Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes more. Uh oh. And more honorable than they. Uh oh. Here, here, now here comes a more honorable entourage. More powerful men from Moab. Greater men, you know? Longer robes, I don't know. More pretty outfits. More money. More promises. They're going to move this prophet. They're going to get him just to speak the word against Israel. And, and he said here in the 17th verse, uh, what, what are they going to do to him? Go, go ahead. For I will promote thee unto very great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou saith unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. Go ahead. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, if Balak would give me his house full of silver uh -oh. and gold, Here it goes. I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my now, God. That's it, saints. He should have just, first of all, when he got him out of the first time, never received them back. Amen. They tried to convert, convert him from the ways of God to evil. Never should have received them back. And there he is stating it again, so obviously he knew the will of God. God looks to know to do the right thing and not do it, to know to stand on God's word, to know to represent him, to, to, to know the right thing to do in any situation and not follow through is a sin. So this man obviously knew it was wrong. He told him again, say, I don't care what you give me. I give cannot me. go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. But what? But what did he say? Now, therefore, I pray you, Tarry ye also here this night, uh -oh. that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. What else is there to be said? What are people looking for from God? They want uh, pe pe people do. They want a, a, a God to agree with them. They want God to go along with them in their sin. They want to feel comfortable in their sin. They want to feel comfortable in their envy, comfortable in their jealousy, their hatred. They want to feel comfortable in their unforgiveness. And God is not with it. Amen. Don't let people fool you. Don't fool yourself. God is not with it. Amen. I'm telling you, I want, I want to know, I want everybody to know God is not playing games. Amen. So he knew, he said, well, I, so I can't go beyond what the, the word of the Lord that he spoke to me. But I tell you, well, stay here, let me go ask him again. <laughs> let me see if he'll change his mind. God does not change his word, saints. And nobody, but nobody, is exempt from obeying it. And what happened? What, what did God tell him? Let me show you. This is really, this is funny right here, in a way. It's, it's funny, but it's not. <laughs> it's funny. Go ahead. We're about to close out. And God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, uh -oh. If the men come to call yeah. thee, mm -hmm. rise up and go with thee. And go with them. Go ahead. But yet the word which I say unto thee, okay. that shalt thou do. So you do, you do it, say what I tell you. But if they come, so I already told you no, but if they come again tonight, so you go on and you go with them. Is God that weak? Is God that indecisive? Does God not know what he wants? Does God not know what his own will is? Yes, he does. But sometimes we insist on God riding with us in our unbelief. We, <laughs> have mercy, Jesus. <laughs> so God, God already knew what baby was going to do, so he's okay, go with him. And it says on down here, And Balaam rose up in the morning uh -huh. and settled his ass and went with the princes and, of Moab. And what happened? And God's anger was kindled he because was gonna, he went. He was going to kill that man. So but I thought God told you, you told him, go on, go on. Go ahead. I already told you no. See, you got to know what the divine will of God is. 
and what the permissive will is. You for God, he'll, he, he's not going to block you. You want to rebel against him? God might not stop you right then. Don't force his hand. Don't try to force God into your, what, if, you, if it's manipulation or whatever it is. Don't try to get God involved with your crimes against faith. Don't do that. Don't try to get God involved with your crimes against obedience. Don't do that. Because God will not change his word. He will not change his mind. He's God. Love him and obey him. God will let you go ahead, you know. Wound up the donkey, the jackass had to save his life. Oh boy, stuff, just stuff everywhere. This is about like Jesus said in the last days, first sign he gave. Say, many will come in my name, saying I'm Christ. Everybody's talking about Jesus. That's one of the first signs he gave of the end. Wars, women's war, wars, all that disease, all this. That's later. First one was the the like growth of religion. Everybody saved. Everybody's preaching. Just, just man, just everything. It's horrible. It's frightening. And he said only a few. So if you got the Lord in your heart and you know it, thank God that he had mercy on you. Love each other, saints. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Serve him. Honor him. Bless his name. Love one another. Have mercy on the poor. The Bible says he that lends to the poor, he gives to the poor, lends to the Lord. Bless him. And if you take care of the poor, the, the homeless, and you love them, and you comfort people, and, and, and you take time out of your day so you don't even consider your time, your time, when you honor God with your life, your time, and you help the less fortunate, God said he'll bless you even in, in when dark times come upon you. God's the light of God's love and his mercy and grace and prosperity will shine in your life. Yes, sir. God will bless yes, sir. you. He'll do it. No, oh, love each other. Yes, sir. Okay? Before you leave here, hug somebody you haven't seen in a long time. Hug and, and, and talk to somebody. Say, hey, bro, I need to talk to you a minute. You know? Look, I've not been carrying this chip on my shoulder. Let me get this together with you. Let's settle this right now. And, and, and not have an attitude about it. We're just getting it together. So let's sit down and have some coffee. Let me take you to dinner, you know? And let's talk about this. Let's make this right. And, and don't, saints. The, there's a scripture, a couple of them. It talks about people who just, okay, now there's some folks who just live totally anti-God. They don't care. Christ in us is the hope of glory. People need that experience. Whatever differences are, squash it. Let's get Satan on the run. Get him out of here. Draw nigh to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Get him on, if it's anti, and use the word on it. Use God's word. Don't, don't, don't you jump up. Oh, I'll whoop your no, you ain't going to whoop nobody. You better get your head torn off. Use God's word situations and